Hello, it's me. Yeah, I, I show up semi-regularly. How's everybody? I'm going to be doing... One part of this is a tag that Nikki Raven picked up from Debbie at Vinyl Beauty. And it's called Ageless Beauty. Now, if somebody knows somebody that's like started these off, these questions much earlier, let us know. Okay. The other part is going to be from another series on being older that I again picked up from Nikki Raven that she picked up from, I believe the name was Alexis. I forgot to write it down before I did it. There's no real questions. It's more a matter of just kind of talking about being older and that kind of thing. And it's called, I'm Not Dead Yet. Imagine that. Anyway, Ageless Beauty has about 10 questions. Some of them are pretty deep, actually. One, to what degree do you think society, social norms, influence the makeup we wear as we get older? Oh, my. Humana, 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 humana. Let me give you a clue. Aging gracefully is not for me. It just isn't. I'm 62. I have a shaved head. I have a tattoo on my face. I have tattoos other places. These are not earrings. These are tunnels. There's the other tunnel back behind the top of the earring. I'm running around in my notorious RBG collar that I picked up. Always remember, ladies, polite women rarely make history. Don't be meek. Don't be polite. Remind somebody that you're speaking when you need to. And not just your sons. Yes, society has a lot to answer for when it comes to how older women are treated. Older men are considered distinguished and experienced. Older women are, are more often considered washed up. We get told that wearing colors is not for us. I got news. They're going to have to peel the colors out of my hands. Okay? Okay. They're going to have to peel the foils and the glitters. And the shimmers out of my hands before I give them up. Now, let me explain about this a little bit. Now, I cannot do my makeup the way I did when I was in my teens and 20s. I can't. My eyes have gotten creepy. It happens. I've earned every wrinkle. I have 
hooded eyes, doing a big winged liner does not work well. Hooded eyes and big wings is a pain in the tuckus. It just is. Don't bother. It makes your head hurt. It's not about the colors and shades and styles of makeup that you wear. It's about how you use it. It's about how you put them on. You can't do what you did when you were a kid and just slap some stuff around. I mean, I want you to think about this. That's my blush and highlighter. Okay? That's the blush and highlighter. Yeah, I turn this way, and you'll see highlighter for days. Straight on, not quite as much. Now, there are times where I will grab up a really intense highlighter because I like them, you know, like these. And I'm talking, that's some intense stuff. And I will wear it. And it's not on a dare. I will wear it. Because I like it. I've got on colorful earrings. Because I like them. This whole thing is about, I like them. Are you kidding? About half of the teenagers in town would be looking at me trying to grab the false eyelashes off. They're rather intense. Now, I have to be careful when I wear false eyelashes like this because I also wear glasses. I wear these more often for filming. I have some shorter pairs that I use for behind my glasses and they fit better. So, yeah. Social norms are expecting me to come up and use beiges and browns and maybe a little color, but anything intense, anything bright. Oh my goodness, you got to go see some of my other films because I will scare you with the intensity. Full out rainbows. Yeah. Full out rainbows everywhere. I get absolutely nuts with my makeup sometimes because it's fun. I don't care what the fashion gatekeepers say. I really don't. I'm sorry, I have done these years. So, yeah, I have earned the I'm doing what I want. Number two, at what age do you think it's inappropriate to wear makeup that's traditionally seen as more youthful, like bright colors and glitter? Good luck prying the bright colors and glitter out of my collection. Like I said, it's all about how you place it and how you use it. Now, I don't use a lot, especially of the basically just glitter in a gel kind of glitters. And I don't use it, not because it's inappropriate to my age, but because I have hooded eyes. And where you normally put glitter, the hood manages to peel off the glitter and drop it into your eyeball. This is not appealing. I didn't do glitter when I was younger. At least not much. 
Question three. Be honest. Have you ever looked at an older person and thought they should not be wearing any more, wearing makeup anymore because they're too old to make it look good? This is back where we come back to how did they apply it? What if they got on? What did they do? I mean, if you look like Betty Davis from whatever happened to baby Jane. Yeah, you need to back up and relearn your makeup techniques. Because that's just wrong. Real wrong. I mean, you can see it on a regular basis where you've got somebody who is used to putting on really intense makeup and they have not changed their technique or made allowances for changes in their skin since they were in their teens. And they're still putting on massively heavy brows with a big arch and it's like one line and, you know, just smearing blue everywhere. And you start looking at it and going, girlfriend, what were you drinking when you decided to put that on come here let me show you a thing or three we no, you can keep your blue that's okay we're just gonna shape it a little better and we're gonna work these eyebrows girlfriend we're gonna work these eyebrows take yourself some vitamin b to get them creases out your lips because that red lips that antique red lipstick you're wearing is bleeding it really is about how you use the materials. If I've got a lipstick that I know likes to bleed, because even taking my vitamin B and all that and doing all the serums and cleansers and whatever, I get little places along the edge of the lip where there's a crease. And yeah, the lipstick will bleed. That's where you start looking at doing some like concealer up close and doing your lip liner. I knew, used to never do lip liner, but I didn't have creases back then. Lip liner can work as a stop for your lipstick, not just outlining your lips. It's like it's not about whether or not she's too old. It's whether or not she is placing the makeup where it needs to be at an appropriate level of depth. As in, don't cake it on. And, you know, don't just take a magic marker and draw your eyebrow. It's how you do it, not what it is that you're doing it with. Number four, when watching YouTube, do you tend to watch channels from creators of a similar age to you, or does it matter? It does matter. If I'm looking for somebody doing a foundation review, the closer they are to my age, the better. If I'm looking in general, just for ideas for eye makeup, I'm not going to listen necessarily too closely to someone who at 20 says they have lines around their eyes. But I will watch them for inspiration, especially with some of the colors. 
because some of the channels where the presenter is older, they, they've already kind of buckled into the aging gracefully thing. Lots of neutrals and 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 pretty close to no color. Now, the makeup I've got on today looks kind of neutral, mostly, because of the way I put it on, for one thing. But it came out of this. All these pinkies and purplies. There's some brown in here. The reason that I'm using this palette is because I'm working on a series called three <laughs> one palette three looks or three looks one palette depending on how you want to say it and this is currently the palette I'm using this is look two I've got one more to go yet but I'm going I've already put this on why can't I use this for this topic I think it makes a point. It looks good. <laughs> it looks good. Don't start. Yeah, I have crepey eyes. Yeah, I have lines. Oh, yeah. But I took my time. And I worked with my eye shape. And I put a base on that go, does well with my creepy eyes. And then I put my color on with a little care. So yeah, it's looking good. But I, do, I look at people who are closer to my age. Now, when it comes to things like colorful looks, some of them are under 35. Some of them are like Nikki Raven, who's 44. She says they're right up front in her videos. And she does some incredible color eye looks. And Debbie, who came up with the, the, the ageless beauty, we think, does incredibly colorful eye looks. Now, I'm not sure how old Debbie is, but she's got some of the same problems I do with, you know, a little bit more wrinkly here in the eyes. And she does incredible looks. So, yeah. Sometimes you have to watch somebody that's closer to your own age. Because if, like I said, if you're looking for something like a foundation or skincare recommendations, you're going to want somebody whose skin is a little closer to the condition your own is in. Now, I've watched people that have more mature, dry skin. I don't care if you're mature and have oilier skin. That doesn't help me much. It's got to be dry. Number five, does ageism exist in the beauty community? If it does, where is the originating point? The origination is in the idea that older women are supposed to age gracefully and let the younger ones take over. I've never been good at accepting social norms. I really haven't. 
I just, yeah, no. When I graduated high school, it was 1976. There were things like punk and the goths and let me tell you i was not average i was not your quote unquote all day every day good little american girl who was like doing apple pie and cheerleading no didn't do it I was the kid in the nerd groups and the science fiction groups and I played with computers and I played Dungeons and Dragons back when it was still on mimeograph sheets, when it was still being passed around the colleges. It was fun. I don't know where my original books are, which is too bad. They'd be rather valuable at this point. They got lost somewhere in a move. But no. Playing by the rules? Not always. Which probably still has my grandmother rolling over in her grave. She tried her best to turn me into a good little Southern Belle. Not so much. No. Nope, 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 nope. Not doing it. Not doing it. Six, do brands do enough to attract, cater, for the 40 plus crowd. Do you think there is untapped potential there? Can't even read my own handwriting. Well, part of that is to wear these lashes and let you see me. I shadow, I have to keep my glasses off. No, I don't have contacts. They're expensive. At this point, the only thing, the only catering that the beauty community, the beauty industry is doing to cater to the 40 plus crowd is pushing age defying stuff. They want you to use all of these serums and potions and lotions and, and stuff to reverse the signs of aging. Really? I earned these wrinkles. They're mine. They're part of me. They're part of my history. I do not need to look like I'm 20 anymore because I'm not. If I wanted to be 20 again, that means I'd have to give up everything I have learned since then. And if I looked 20, but it was just a shell, I go home and take off a shell. And then people are going, where did the 20 year old go? She grew up. I would rather look the best I can at my age and look my age and be respected for what I've learned over these 62 years than I would like to look like I did when I was 20. You know, if, if 
if the brands want to do something for people that are 40 plus who want to wear makeup, maybe they could do a few formulas for things like eyeshadow bases that are not necessarily just stuff that looks like spackle. Mm -hmm. Number seven, do you do anything to counteract aging or do you think it doesn't matter? I don't do things specifically to counteract aging. I do take care of my skin, which helps. I don't have too much sun damage because I've always been one of those people, even though my skin tone has a lot of yellow in it, I'm not one of those people that, that goes out and gets that little sun-kissed color and then comes back in the house. No, I do the cool thing and I go out and I get sunburnt and I come back in and I peel and then I do it again. Now, part of that has to do with the fact that I have a autoimmune issue that is very sun sensitive. Some of my medications make me more sun sensitive. Da, da, da. So, yeah, I wear my sunscreen and I wear moisturizer. And in some cases, I wear a lot of moisturizer. I live on the edge of the high desert in southeastern Oregon. So I'm right up against the Elkhorn Mountain Range. And you go farther east, and it's, it's desert. You go farther west, and you get farther into the mountains. The area is, you know... It, we're closer to Boise, Idaho than we are to Portland. So, but I, I use good, decent cleansers on my face. I try not to get the water too hot on my face. Do I have tons and tons and lines and lines of serums and um, acid peels and all that other stuff. No, I just don't. I don't, and I don't want to. I make a coffee scrub for myself out of grounds from the house and a little coconut oil. And then I use in some cases, it's whatever came in the last subscription bag. Currently, I just got a brand new Elemis cleansing balm, but I haven't finished with my Perlice cleansing balm yet. So, yeah, I take care of my skin. I try not to treat it too badly. But no, I don't have 10 bottles of, of squeeze bulb tubes sitting around with a different kind of chemical in each one. I think I have a total of maybe four. Yeah, four and a couple of just squeezy tubes for when I get things like these breakouts and stuff. That goes along with that cotton picking autoimmune issue, too. Eight, in your mind, do you equate aging with a diminishing of beauty? No, it changes it, it redefines what beauty is. At the time, every day your face is changing. You are not going to be the same person that you were when you were born. By the time you get to the point 
where it's time for you to age out of the system. Everything changes it. You could have an accident and change your entire facial structure. Does that make you less beautiful? Not really. It makes you different. It means some people aren't going to be able to see past scars. Some people can't see past wrinkles. Any real beauty for anybody. I mean, you can be just as cute as a bug and be just as nasty on the inside as you want to be. And I'm sorry, I will see nasty. I will not see attractive. It's beauty is only skin deep when you're talking about an appearance. But an ugly attitude goes all the way to the bone. If you are not projecting a beautiful personality, I don't care how much makeup you put on. People might look at you and go, ooh, isn't that hot? Until they get to know you. I mean, I have, and this is one of the things that drives me nuts. Most of the time when I'm taking pictures, the still pictures, especially the ones that I put up on Instagram, I kind of make a point of getting that wedding ring in there. You know? And still, three quarters of the people that start following me are following because they're attracted to the picture. And I'm going, you dudes do realize, in some cases, I'm old enough to be your grandma. What is wrong with you? You're seeing just that flash from the picture and not really looking at the person. Good for me. I look good. I'm attracting some people. And it's like, not that I really want to attract the Lonely <coughs> Hearts <coughs> Club. Um, but you know, they're only looking at the exterior. They're not seeing the person. And this goes right back to that, that movie that they did called Shallow Hal. He could not, for the life of him, see the actual person. I really hated that movie because there was some fat shaming crap in that thing that just, like, got on my last nerve. But it made a point. The guy could not for the life of him, see the other person. He only saw what he wanted to see. So, you know, aging, diminishing beauty? No. Let, re let me remind you that a lot of people think that their grandmother or their great-grandmother, if they were lucky enough to know her, were some of the most beautiful people they have ever met. And it wasn't because of the makeup. My great-grandmother didn't wear any, ever. But she taught me stuff. So, yeah, for me, age and diminishing beauty doesn't equate. 
because it's not about whether or not your skin's tight. It really isn't. Number nine. Name a channel that you would recommend at, as someone who challenges ageism in the beauty community and shows that anyone can wear whatever they want. I've already talked about two of them. Debbie from Vinyl Beauty and Nikki Raven. And I'm mentioning them because that's where I got the question tag. And Nikki Raven was the one who also did the um, I'm Not Dead Yet, which is the opinions part. I mean, I could pull out all of my palettes and show you the colorful stuff. Or you could go back through my video catalog and go look at the colorful stuff. So, yeah. If you want to see people who, like me, tell the fashion and beauty gatekeepers to get out of the way, then we're here. Debbie is doing colorful looks all the time. Nikki is doing colorful looks all the time. I kind of switch up between colorful and a little neutral, and sometimes I go for subtle instead of bold. It just, it depends on what I'm doing it for. Sometimes it's just playing with makeup. Sometimes I'm going somewhere that I want to look spectacular for. Sometimes I'm going to the grocery store with a bar with a bold eye you'd expect to see at some place like the Kennedy Center with an evening gown. Yes, I've done that before. That was back when we still had money. Got to see opening night at the Kennedy Center when Carol Channing did her last run of Hello Dolly. That was incredible and worth dressing up for. Ten, what tips do you have for anyone older who wants to venture into colorful or bold eye looks? If you have never done a colorful eye look or a bold colored eye look, do not, and I will say it again, do not go running out and buy everything you see. Just don't do it. Because you may go out and try some of this and then figure out it's not really what you want to do. Last thing you want to do is have a whole collection of stuff that you don't actually want to use. Get a, doesn't have to be a large palette. It can be a small palette. It can be just about anything with color available. Get yourself a palette. Look around. Look at some of the videos that people are doing with palettes and check out and see which ones appeal to you. Like this. You've got a few bold colors in there. And then play with it. 
mess around with it. Get some decent brushes. They don't have to be expensive. Get some decent brushes. Stick your brushes in the stuff. Stick your fingers in the stuff. And play with it. Just smear it how, around however you want to. Nobody says you have to do particular shapes or anything else until you get to a point where you feel comfortable doing them. Practice some. Just play. I mean, something like this, for somebody who hasn't done a bold color, or hasn't done any specific colors in a long time. I mean, you know, it looks a little dull when you're looking at it in the pan. But it gives you something to work with. You can learn to do things like build it up. You can learn to do things like learn to shear it out, depending on what you want your colors to look like. You can layer colors. You can play all day. And then go through and do things like figure out if you've got hooded eyes. If you've got deep set eyes. Deep set eyes and hooded eyes have a lot of the same problems because where the folds come in, deep set eyes, it folds back. Hooded eyes, it just folds over. But because of those folds, you get rubs. The last thing you want to do is put heavy, glittery stuff where the skin is going to fold and rub together because then you end up with bare patches. I mean, you know, grab something that's got colors and play with them. Get a palette. You don't have to have a specific one. You don't have to have the latest big name expensive company unless that's your thing anyway. You don't need to spend a ton of money to get started. Get some colors. Get a palette that's got more than like three or four colors. And start playing. Just start playing. And as you go along, start watching some more videos. Start learning about tricks and tips and techniques for applying the makeup to get it to do what you want it to do. Now, when I first started doing this channel two years ago, more than two years ago now, because August 28th was the two-year anniversary, I hadn't done a lot of makeup in a long time. So, I had to not only figure out putting makeup on a much older face than I was used to, I took a chance and put away my beiges and browns, you know, the grandma colors, and grabbed up some colorful makeup and started playing. 
Now, when I first started doing this channel, let me tell you, some of those older films are pretty scary because they were not that good. They really weren't. And I know it, but I leave them there because that way other people can go back and see that, yeah, it looked really kind of bad. I'm doing a little better now, but it's two years of practice. You're not going to be born knowing how to do this. And the more you play and mess with the colors and mess with the application and the techniques, the better off you're going to end up for how you do it. It's fun. I mean, I have done looks like this with the shorter eyelashes and gone to the grocery store. And I live in a little tiny town. Okay? Little tiny town. We've got one dedicated pharmacy. There's three grocery stores, two of which have a pharmacy. If you're familiar with Albertsons and Safeway, they're actually the same company. We have one Dollar Tree. The other grocery store is, is an outlet store. And then we have a place called Buy Mart, which is a small town version of Wally World. But let me tell you, yeah, no, tiny little sort of department store, tiny, with a pharmacy. And the, 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 the city of my residence is surrounded by cattle ranches and horses and big farms that do a lot of stuff to feed the cattle and horses. Normal order of the day around here is more often jeans, boots, and a straw hat. And I still don't care. I put on the crazy makeup. I go out sometimes full glam and put on my jeans and whatever else and go traipsing through the store because I really don't have any fancy clothes anymore. I don't really have anywhere to go to wear them. And they just, it's been a long time since I've had a use for them. So I'm more often than not in jeans and shirt. Most of which come from the thrift stores. That's what happens when you live on disability. No, that's just my asthma. Don't worry about it. I'm not, I am not Rona-ing. Anyway, play with it. Get online and watch channels. You can kind of go through on the search and just put in, you know, things about mature beauty and a lot more of it will show up. Go out and get just a little makeup. A reasonable set of brushes. And play. And play and play and play and play. If you've got but it eyes. You're going to want to not necessarily get big, floofy brushes like this. 
because you really don't have a lot of room to work. Use that. It's a round brush. Use that. But go play. Uh oh. Where the baby? You can hear him all the way up here. Come here, shorty. Which one is this? Cloud. Come here, Cloud. <laughs> Hi, He's sweetheart. The one. I got Mario Hi, in the hood. Hi, sweetheart. He wants to go under your clothes. Not yet. You have to show off to the people first. Say hi, everybody. My name is Cloud. My daughter-in-law has been working with one of the local animal rescues, and we are one of the first stop fosters for brand new emergency litters. This little 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 was part of an absolute infant litter that we got because mama had passed and these little guys were very tiny and very weak and three weeks old when we got them. they were about two weeks old they barely had their eyes open so we have been syringe and bottle feeding them. Unfortunately, we've lost two. They were just too sick. But this little thing is doing just fine now. Doing much better. Much better. Yeah. Do you want to help with feeding these two? Or should I ask Pop, Dad? Ask Poppy. I'll be there in a minute. That was my delightful son. Anyway, I was getting ready to wrap this up anyway. But that's that's my current project besides being in college and doing this and writing on a couple of books. And yes, a couple of books at this point because I've gotten far enough in the first one that I've started on the next one in the series. I didn't plan on doing a series but it just kind of evolved that way anyway tell me what you think you think of the look check out videos for techniques for people who have mature skin and go play go play go play be good.